previously, outside of the dungeon of the Mad Mage, the party breathed in the frigid but fresh air of a snow-covered water deep. Their return to the surface was much celebrated by the patrons of the Yawning Portal, but soon enough, the party moved on, splitting up and heading through the city in order to accomplish the tasks that had brought them topside. The evening saw a myriad of these activities. Bones visited with Aotaden and Ochotu for work. Ashes went to the Temple of the Moon for information about the strange manifestations he experienced with Zalara. Ezra handled business with Sine at the Lifted Spirits, and Matashtai tracked down the masked man with whom he arranged to have Wolf gain more freedom at the risk of the imprisoned Fae's existence. It was a busy time, Damn. rather than an opportunity for rest and recuperation. And as the evening passed into night and then to morning, that didn't change. For on the morning of the 25th of Hammer, as the party set about their morning ritual in the Lifted Spirits, they found, waiting for each of them, a summons to their respective patrons. So, after taking care of some basic tasks, the party found themselves once more separating, each off to see the individuals that had brought them together in the first place, that had tasked them with delving into Undermountain discovering the secrets of the shadow, and making sure it could never reach Waterdeep again. That had been over three months ago, four since the horrible events of High Harvest Tide, when the shadow had once again seeped into the streets of Waterdeep. Matashtai made his way to Pyrgaron's palace, where he was met with a waiting attendant. The monk was led to the east wing, a maze of hallways that all looked the same. He shortly found himself in a small audience room with Lairal Silverhand, the open war lord of Waterdeep, and one of the leaders of the Lord's Alliance. At first, Lairal was brusque, almost accusatory, as she demanded a report from Matashtai. But as the monk answered her questions calmly, Lairal began to shift her tone. The one that still held confidence in the party and advised caution and measured progress. Then her attention turned to a different issue. Jalister Silvermane, a member of the Lord's Alliance, accused the party of abandoning his rescue operation in the Xanathar's lair. Matashtai explained the situation as best he could, and Lairal's response was... disconcerting. Rather than be angry, she seemed to show an immense weight upon her person, and then commanded Matashtai that in the future, he must not hesitate to abandon those in need if assisting them meant jeopardizing his mission. Matashtai voiced his understanding, though not his acceptance, and the two parted ways. Next, Ezra met with Mert, the moneylender, at the Lighthouse Theater. I remember this. Mert was a leader within the Harper's organization, a voice of confidence and support for both Ezra and the party as a whole. He explained that there was a growing concern amongst the combined groups that as the year progressed and swung back towards High Harvest Tide, the risk of another attack from the Shadow grew. There was a feeling that not enough progress was being made. But, after listening to Ezra's report on the party's journey, Mert seemed confident that enough was being done. He cautioned Ezra, but didn't seem concerned about the overall speed the party explored at. He also let Ezra know that Kalal Kladani had sent word that the party was likely safe to return to Skullport should they choose to. Meanwhile, Ashes found his way to Blackstaff Tower, where he met with Vajra Safar, the seventh Blackstaff. Vajra, simply put, was in a fury. 
She seemed beset from all sides by mounting threats, and the party's measured progress infuriated her, another threat slowly looming on the horizon. She demanded the Blood Hunter increase the pace of the party. When Ashes asked for assistance utilizing the portals to increase the party's ability to travel through the dungeon, Vajra posited that the party should risk more for the city's sake. The Blackstaff also criticized Ash's time spent with the Temple of the Moon, though she seemed accepting of it as long as it empowered Ashes to complete his task swiftly. Last but not least, she informed Ashes of a minor translation issue with the original portent that had brought all of this together. It had not been barred mage and that might mean something but vajra was too busy to discuss things further she dismissed ashes rather abruptly needing to turn to a different task the blood hunter made his way back out into the city Three of the four party members had answered their summons and experienced three very different sets of instruction. The matter, or rather the mission, was of grave import. But as is wont for many things, ideas on how exactly to complete a task vary. What will the fourth patron have to say? Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.